Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. Working on part nine, I think, of this uh, Heister A3 Cummins engine build. So I'm uh, wrapping up the details on the outside, I guess. But uh, next step, I believe, is going to be getting the injectors put in the area diesel refurbished for me. So I'm going to grab them and go over the installation procedure. And this nice box here should be a set of lines that fellow YouTuber Fred Newman sent to me that's off of his A3 Cummins. Uh, he's building a carbon fiber intake for his, so he can't use these lines because they interfere with the intake where it goes. So they'll work great for me because I'm just putting stock stuff on here. I don't need a fancy intake for my forklift. This thing's going to be way more power than what it originally had anyway. So it, uh, it's overkill. But it's what I wanted, so to do the job. It lifts really heavy. I mean, it lifts 15,000 off-road. So the thing weighs like probably 20, in the 20 to 25,000 pound range empty. And then if you're carrying 15,000 pounds around on it on top of that, well, then, you know, you're up there for close to 40,000 pounds. You're half of a semi-truck. Uh, maybe a 505 cubic inch engine is not so out of line when you're moving that much weight around. Not it's really high speed, but on a forklift. But you never know what you might need to do. So better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Anyway, let me get the injectors and we'll put them in. Well, here's my injectors from area. I already got the dust seals on them. I'm going to take these thick coppers off that they sent and put these thin ones out of my engine kit on there. I like that better. It gets the spray pattern down into the bowl more, particularly advantageous for running advanced timing like what this engine is going to have. So I'm going to use these instead. So I'll trade these out as I put them in. Well, never sees on the nut body don't want any down here on this face but having it all over the body will help it to be sure that it doesn't rust and freeze into the head and pipe goes up on a eight three Normally you have to put a little grease on these copper washers to keep them from falling off, but these are a tight fit on these. Last one. So these are a great big tip with 480 horse marine injectors for this engine. I didn't really need that, but it's what I have, so it's what I'm going to use. I may wind up building a different set of injectors later on. If these prove to be too smoky, uh, those marine engines are known for white hazing. But hopefully with the more mild timing and higher compression, it's going to work out sweet. Now I need hold downs. 
They use the injector hold downs. This is the side that goes towards the injector, the curved. So when it torques down, it pulls it in. More slathery goodness never sees. Torque spec is 18 foot pounds. Should be there. Find all these return plugs. Fuel injection returns. Don't want to reuse these coppers, they leak something terrible most of the time. So let me put a new one of those on. New returns. Well, I got the fuel lines all on, thanks to Fred. Got the clamps in, so I just have them. They're loose on this end, so I'll be able to bleed it out because I'm sure this thing's gonna be totally full of air. So I get some fuel hoses hooked up on here and I guess we'll be ready to start this thing. Let's see if it still cranks over under compression. Got the oil pressure gauge there. And I'll hold the camera upside down. It'll be right side up, right?
wait. Well, I think that's going to do it for this video. I still got the AFC lines got to go on here, but it's not really important at this point. We don't have any plates for the turbocharger to blow over here. So, but um, I got my air pipe on for the compressor, and the water pipes are all in and hooked up. Don't have any oil running in the floor, so that's a good sign. Didn't manage to find the right turbo drain line that fits in there. And got the, the good hose, polyvinyl hose, I think is what they call that on there. It's good stuff. Doesn't degrade like rubber does, especially under heat for the drain. So, got the dipstick in. Had to buy a new tube for that because it broke the other one off trying to get it out of the block. One thing left on this side is I get the cooling sensor put in down there and get the uh, water pipe hooked up. But that's really all stuff for after it's in the lift. So from pieces to pretty much a complete engine, making progress. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this time. Uh, I'll have to get a fuel tank and some fuel lines and when I bring you back, it'll be time to fire this thing up and see what happens. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, I'll catch y'all later.